Welcome to the Nightclub, guys. It's your host, the Night Wrencher. Today, I'm going to be showing you guys what happens when you actually weld dirty metal. In this example right here, I've already cut a couple coupons worth of metal, and I've got the ground right here that I'm going to go ahead and hook up my clamp to. I'm going to spot weld this piece of metal to this piece of metal, so we're going to have a clean piece of metal right here, but everything right here is not going to be clean. So I'm going to show you guys what exactly happens when you try to weld on top of dirty metal. That is really stinky metal. All right, so as you guys can see, I went ahead and I tack welded the little piece of metal to the bigger piece of metal. The bigger piece of metal has a clean area right here for the ground clamp to sit on, which is very important. A lot of you guys seem to be welding with dirty grounds. Dirty grounds are gonna produce even worse welds. You guys gotta make sure that your grounds are clean. Uh, because I cut this little piece of metal with the plasma cutter, all four sides are actually clean. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually not gonna sand down this metal right here because this side's already clean. In order to get your weld started, you are going to want to go ahead and start off with at least a clean area. And then from there, you're gonna to wanna to go slow. You're gonna to wanna to try to burn off the area before you actually go to weld on it. And the reason for that is if you just try to go through and run a bead on it, you're gonna get a bunch of porosity. You're gonna get a lot of holes and we're gonna go through that right now. All right, because I was able to run metal on top of metal in a lap weld, I was able to just run basically almost all the way across. I, I was able to go about halfway before I started poking in the metal. Then I turned around and went the other way and then went back into the middle, covered up that hole. If we flip this thing around, you guys are gonna be able to see something really interesting. So these were the tack welds that I did earlier. And as you guys noticed, these are almost perfectly flat. There's almost nothing popping out except for this one where and I ended up just laying on the bead a little bit. But these are properly done tack welds. Uh, you have the fused metal in the middle and then you have the heat ring around it. So if we go look at this, you guys are gonna notice that I've got an excessive amount of metal that actually poke through. And the reason for that was because I had to drag my weld a little bit slower across the bead because if I was to go any faster, I was going to get even more porosity and going slower allows me to burn off the grime that's on there as I'm going. So the secret to welding on top of rust, after you've got the initial spot weld going, you want to try to stay as long as you can inside the puddle because your puddle is going to allow you to keep the ground uh, back to your machine. If you go ahead and just get out of the puddle and try to continue on over here, you're going to get interruptions because you're not going to have anywhere for the wire to ground to. So if you just stay inside the puddle and just gently drag it across, you should be able to just burn off all the grime and do a pretty solid weld. This is a solidly welded material, but you're introducing excessive heat. You're introducing a little bit of extra warpage. You're gonna have to do a little bit of cleanup on the backside. But if you're welding rusted metal, you don't really care about that, honestly. If you're taking the time to go ahead and prep and weld rusted metal, to something that maybe in an industrial setting or in your home garage or you just need something to work, this is perfectly acceptable. You're gonna be fine. These are perfectly strong welds. You're never gonna have a problem. Don't ever use rusted metal to do a customer job. It's just not the right thing to do. It's weaker. Uh, welds come out nastier. You don't get the penetration required and you end up overheating the metal. So if it's for your home use and you wanna recycle metal, go right ahead. There's no issues. Don't use it for a customer material. That's all. I'll see you guys all in the next one. Night Wrencher, out.